My husband has described a hairy biped that has been seen by him on at least two occasions, and by his father on one occasion on Brindley Mountain in Morgan County, Alabama. This biped is well known to residents of this side of the mountain. I have always been skeptical, thinking perhaps they are seeing bears or such. My husband is a seasoned outdoorsman, however, and he rarely mistakes wildlife. In summer of 99, my husband was clearing land for a family member close to the bluff where sightings were reported off and on. I was sitting on a car watching him in a tree. He's a tree surgeon. I happened to look off toward the tree line for no reason that I recall, and I saw perhaps several hundred feet off, a tall reddish man-like creature with no apparent neck standing off in the shadows of the tree line. I looked up at my husband and gestured toward the area. Upon looking back, the creature was gone. My husband's nephew was also sitting next to me, and he saw the same thing I saw. I still to this day wonder what in the world I saw. I know bear, having seen many, and having traveled out west, and this was no bear. Since that incident, my husband was hunting, and he and his father saw from their tree posts the same creature. He would have to tell you the details. He has had, I believe, one other sighting, but there are many accounts within his family and surrounding neighbors on the bluff. I have heard screams late at night around 2 or 3 a.m. that no one can match them to any certain animal. They are very similar to sound files we have heard online, very much like a bobcat hound dog combo. It is like a howl, scream, very loud and drawn out. We continue to watch for further evidence, but have not had or heard of any activity for a couple of seasons to date. I am a park ranger at Sequoia National Park, a place known for its towering redwoods and breathtaking vistas. The park spans over 400,000 acres and is home to some of the oldest and largest trees in the world. As a ranger, I often patrol the park alone, but I never felt afraid until one night when everything changed. I was on a routine patrol when I heard a strange noise coming from the trees. It sounded like something large was moving through the forest. I dismissed it as an animal and continued on my way, but the noise persisted, getting louder and closer. Suddenly, I caught a glimpse of a large, hairy creature lurking in the shadows. It was Bigfoot. I froze, unsure of what to do. The creature began to approach me, its eyes glowing in the darkness. I tried to back away, but I stumbled and fell, injuring my ankle in the process. Bigfoot was now standing over me, its massive arms raised as if to strike. I braced myself for the worst, but the creature suddenly stopped and looked up at the sky. It let out a deafening roar before disappearing into the trees. I lay there stunned and terrified, unsure of what had just happened. When I reported the incident to my colleagues, they dismissed it as a hallucination or a prank. But I knew what I had seen. I had encountered the legendary creature of the woods, Bigfoot. From that night on, I was never the same. I became obsessed with the idea of Bigfoot and spent every moment researching and studying the creature. I discovered countless stories of Bigfoot sightings and encounters, each one more terrifying than the last. But what scared me the most was the realization that I was not alone in the woods. There were creatures out there lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. And while most people would never encounter them, I knew the truth. Bigfoot was real, and it was out there waiting for its next victim. I'm 18 male, and this is a story that both my parents recall, 56 male, 48 female. It happened around 2004 in January, a few days after I was born in Peters Township, Pennsylvania. They were driving home on a well-traveled but still rural road to the newly built development where they lived. They had just passed a power station when they looked into the field to the left and saw it. They describe it as a wolf the size of a small horse with a barrel chest running on all fours with red eyes. They were traveling at around 35 miles per hour, and it kept perfect pace with the car. 
Around 100 yards from the turn into the development, it ran across the road and disappeared into the woods. My son has convinced me to contact you. I will tell your organization of our encounters. On November 28, 2008, I was visiting a friend's house in Lacey's Spring, Alabama. His house is in a small middle-class neighborhood with mountains and woods that stretch for miles behind his home. I woke up to use the bathroom at about 4 a.m. and had just laid back down when I began to hear loud vocalizations. The sounds were very similar to the Ohio and Mississippi recordings. I was inside the house and his heating unit was running so they must have been very loud outside. I got up and went out on his back deck, but by the time I got there, they had stopped. I listened for about ten minutes and heard nothing. The heating unit was next to the deck and was quite loud, so I decided to go back inside. About the time I started to fall asleep, it started again. The howls lasted about three minutes, then stopped. I thought that it might be my friend snoring in the back bedroom. But I don't believe this was so because the neighborhood dogs were barking throughout the area in response to the howls. At this point, I knew something outside was making the noise. I wanted to go into the woods for a better listen, but walking into the woods with no one in the know and not prepared for self-defense or to photograph or record the creature did not seem like a wise proposition. The howling started and stopped three more times and finally finished at dawn. I talked with my son about what I had heard, and, and he and I have also had an encounter with this animal in the past. This is my first time going public about this encounter out of fear of seeing it again. This took place roughly 14 years ago. When I was a kid, my family moved out of the city and moved to a small town called Deerbrook, situated on the outskirts of Antigo, Wisconsin. Our house was surrounded by woods on three sides and a river and field in the back. The first year out there was really calm and relaxing, other than constant coyote howls every night. But every so often there would be a different howl. It was a deeper, much louder howl that would shake us to our core. At first my parents would dismiss it as a wolf or just a bigger coyote, but something about it seemed off. One night in mid-July, my brother, my sister and I decided to pitch a tent in the back field along the tree line. We just wanted to go, camping. We sat with sticks, roasting our marshmallows till it got really dark, then the typical howl started up. But once again, that deep howl was back, and it sounded like it was right in our ears. With how loud it was, it's hard to even guess where it was coming from. So we decided to put out our fire and get in the tent. Later that night, my sister fell asleep, so my brother and I chatted and made jokes. Within minutes, we heard animals running around outside the tent, and then this little raccoon started to claw at the side of the tent that I was sleeping on. And first, I kept just poking at it, but then we heard something else, the crack of sticks from the trees. At that point, my brother thought it was a bear and told us to be quiet and woke my sister up. We started to hear footsteps coming closer and closer. Pretty quick, they were right next to me. The raccoon just bolted out of there, and there started to have this strange odor coming from somewhere. It smelled like copper, sulfur, and wet dog. It was almost overpowering and made me want to puke. But we hear our mom calling us, and as she shined the flashlight on us, it revealed the most unsettling thing I have ever seen. The shadow of this thing was shining through our tent, and it was massive. It had pointed ears that were tilted back like a dog on the prowl, and its hands were human-looking with long fingers that ended in a point. The mouth was in the shape of a snout, just a little shorter, and it had a mid-sized tail. My mom started screaming, and whatever that thing was bolted back into the woods. We rushed inside with our mom and didn't go back out for a few days. Fast forward a few months, I was in the living room with my mom while my sister was in the shower. We were watching Wheel of Fortune or something like that when my sister screamed bloody murder. My mom jumped up and went to go get her. She pulled her out of the bathroom and I got curious as to why she was freaking out, so I went in to see. Above the shower at one of the super small windows that only a small head could fit through.
and in the window was a set of red glowing eyes staring down at me. We stared at each other for what felt like a decade. I didn't feel fear, more just curiosity, and I didn't feel like I was in danger at that time, as my mom came in to then. Pull me out the eyes turned away as well. The rest of the night was quiet after that. A few days later, my brother came back from his dad's. Him and I had bunk beds, so I'd always take the bottom bunk. That night was kind of a gloomy night. It wasn't real windy, but it was drizzling a little bit. Later in the night, my brother and I got woken up to the window being opened. It was locked beforehand, by the way. After that, we just closed it and went back to bed. It happened again and again, like three more times. Each time we locked it, but the final time was the worst. It flung open so hard that the glass shattered and thins thing we saw what pushed it open. That same hand from the tent, but I can see it clearly now. It had matted black fur, or hair, rather, covering its whole arm. The skin on its palms was like a light tan, and the claws were about five, six inches long. And on the bottom of the window I saw its face, or what was showing. It was just the eyes, glowing bright red. They looked like the embers of a roaring fire. My brother and I bolted up, grabbed my sister, and locked ourselves in the back gaming room. We stayed there for the rest of the night, and when my mom came home, we told her and packed our things. We moved out of that house in a day and took what we could fit, filling one car and the uh, ooh all. My stepdad's truck was full as well, and we left never to return. To this day, my family is scared to talk about it, but if my brother and I have a few drinks, we discuss it. But my mom just shuts down whenever it's brought up. Thanks for your time. It was late in the fall. I was bored and decided to go fishing. I was 15 years old at the time. I grabbed my rod and my tackle box and started down the trail to a small pond. It was about two o'clock in the afternoon and a quarter mile down the trail it came across one footprint, only one. I thought it was odd that someone this time of year would be walking barefoot. I put my boot in the middle of the foot front and it was bigger than my boot. At that time my shoe size was ten and a half inches. I continued down the trail to the pond. Just before I reached the pond, the bushes got thick on both sides of the trail. It opened to a clearing alongside the pond. After walking through the bushes to the clearing to my right was a deer, a small doe about 125 pounds. It was no more than six feet away. It looked at me and I looked at it. Strangely, it wasn't scary to me. It just kept staring in the direction I was headed, looking in that direction, and then looking back at me, then looking back in that direction. I looked to see what it was looking at, but there was nothing. She looked at me and turned to the thick bushes behind her and slowly walked into them, then took off quickly like a shot. I walked around the pond over an old tunnel to a beachy area on the other side to fish. I made about two casts with a spinner when a large rock hit the water above the path that I took to the pond. There was an old trolley trail that went over the tunnel. The hill was covered in trees and you could barely see the old trail. I thought it was just some kids messing around, so I yelled, I'm trying to fish. That's when all hell broke loose. Several large rocks all started to hit the water at the same time, and this kept going for several seconds, and I mean absurdly large rocks, about 15 to 20 pounds each. When one hit the beach about 10 feet away from where I was standing, I turned and grabbed my tackle box and ran. I didn't even reel the pole in all the way. I just ran a quarter of a mile as quickly as I could, found the main road, and walked home. Two weeks before, I had been walking home from a friend's house and used the same area as a shortcut to go through. I was on the lower path when I could hear two deep voices. It sounded like two men talking and was coming from the upper path. This was around ten. 30 at night, and I could not make out the language or what they were saying, but both voices were very deep. I got a feeling of dread like I was trespassing and felt very threatened. I was too scared to look. I just stared three feet in front of me on the trail until I got to a large opening in the trail. It led to an open field that was about 20 acres of land that my backyard butted up against. That's when the feeling in the voices stopped. 
Then I ran out of there as fast as I could running straight for home. Two years later, I was walking down the road through the woods that cut through the back side of that property. It was a warm July night, and about nine o'clock at night, I heard large tree limbs snap and hit the ground alongside a stream that led to the pond. There was a slight breeze blowing that night. I told myself it must have been the wind. But then in the same spot, a 20-foot tree started to shake and hit the ground. This tree was alive, fully grown with green leaves. I backed up the road 100 yards so I couldn't see the area anymore. In a moment of horror, I turned and ran like hell until I got home. I've never been back to that area or a pond ever again. It was a large dog, but it didn't quite match the typical description of a dogman. It looked fake like someone put on a costume. It looked like a cross between a domestic dog breed and a wild dog. Its belly was brown, but the rest of the fur on its body was mostly black. It was kind of fluffy and had hair on the tips of its ears. The reason why I described it as being dogman-like is because it almost fit the appearance. It had huge paws. With claws, I once saw a bear, and this thing's paws were about the same size as a bear's paws. This thing stood up on two feet as I drove by. I was curious and wanted to pull over and get a better look at it, but the driver behind me must have been scared because he rear-ended me and maintained speed after I switched to the emergency park lane. I slowly started to break, but he honked, and I gave up trying to stop. My plan was to stop and try to take a picture, then drive off as fast as I could. I saw this thing between Elk Point and Vermilion. I was driving home from work on a six-lane highway heading west into Hamilton, Ontario. As I drove on my side of the highway, I saw a dog cross from the left side to the right. That area is full of trees, bushes, channels, and ravines of water that are off Chutes of Lake, Ontario. When I saw the dog, it was approximately one half of a kilometer ahead of me. The astonishing aspect of this dog, I'm certain it was a dog, was that its length from nose to rump, excluding its tail, covered almost the full width of the lane. Eight feet, where it was heading, was back into a small valley filled with heavy forestation and a ravine. I couldn't believe a dog could grow to that size. I still remind my boyfriend of this occasionally. I have no witnesses. Me and my friend, both teenage girls, were going toward Creek to reach my brother, 31 who was scheming for us, and we were screaming back at him. He had a flashlight. We didn't. Me and my friend came to a fence. We crossed at the lower part. We heard footsteps of one two-legged being in the brush moving, 15, 20 feet beyond. There was a dark bush which looked like all other dark bushes. We stepped into this bush, but it wasn't a bush. It was furry. We must have stepped on its arm or leg because it started moving uncontrollably, and the whole bush started moving, and we fell down out of fright, and it was furry, and we screamed at the top of our lungs and ran toward the nearest light in someone's backyard. About five minutes before we approached the furry bush, my brother was on the other side of the creek flashing the flashlight in our direction. At the same spot, he saw a tall animal about seven feet tall, and he described it as having large yellow eyes reflecting and blinking at him from the flashlight in the same area, and he ran like hell in the other direction from us because he felt like he was in danger. The furry being seemed to be separating me and my friend from my brother, and we both ended up in different ends of the town. Upon each of our sightings, we stood there in shock for about a minute each. It was sitting when we ran into it, and it was standing when my brother saw it. We had just arrived in camp at Odell Lake and got set up for a four-day fishing trip, started a fire to drive off the mosquitoes, and started hearing a loud, echoing call, kind of a howl and a scream mixed together, that lasted about five seconds per call. It seemed to be coming from above the railroad tracks that run along the west end of the lake. 
This went on for about 15 minutes. Then I could hear a camper somewhere in camp screaming, Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! But it didn't and went on for another 20 minutes or so. The next morning, my 13-year-old son woke up before the rest of us and went out to start a fire at about 4 a.m. before going fishing. Later that day, he told us he had heard the calls again while starting the fire and followed by a pounding on a tree sound. In another call, in another location, and then it stopped and we didn't hear it again. The rest of our time there. I was a teenager and I was still in high school. Occasionally, my mom and I would drive around for hours to places that we didn't even know about just aimlessly driving to some place that would get us away from everything. We found many cool areas doing this. Now the reason for it wasn't very pleasant. I'd rather not go into details about it, but at least we have the memories we do. It was a particularly bad day. My mom picks me up from school. She got to leave work early and she says that we were going for another drive. I never complained because I knew my mom was dealing with enough already so I did everything I could to make her happy. That meant smiling and sucking it up. It also meant never complaining about spending too much time in the car. I did have siblings, but they were always with their friends. I had friends, but none that I really hung out with outside of school. I suppose I was more of a lone wolf than a social type. This meant that I was mom's only company during the tougher days, and I knew how much that meant to her. It meant a lot to me, too, as we are driving, the sky gets pretty gray. It looked like we were going to be drying in the rain, and I was okay with that. My mom was driving some time before I realized that we are in the foothills. And from this area, we started heading up towards the mountains. We hadn't been to this area before. It was pretty cool. It was very green, and the road was full of all sorts of crazy twists and turns. My mom liked driving on roads like that and made her feel invincible, I think. There's a point in time when we get to a flat area. I assumed it was the very top of this mountain. There's a road that leads straight ahead, but there's these weird gates. They sort of reminded me of those railroad gates that can open and close. They happen to be open. It looked really weird, but we were both very curious about it. So we went in. There were a few huge metal boxes that looked like transformers or something. I figured they were somehow connected to the gate that we drove through. All around us is this really cool wooded area. We followed the road. For some time eventually we hit dead end. At the end of the road was this enormous body of water. It looked like a lake, but it seemed to turn into rivers that led off into two different directions. It seemed peaceful and that's what my mom needed. We climbed out of the car and start to walk around this small area of land. If you were looking at the body of water from our car, there were different elements to notice. The first being that the area of land that we stood on obviously wrapped around the lake. But it was weird because we both couldn't walk on any of the sides. We were stuck in the dead center of the lake. This was partly due to the area on the left and the right of us being very steep and covered in rocks. There were two river-type things, as I mentioned, but they sort of swerved out to the northeast and northwest. It created this V-shape almost. And then dead ahead of us was another area of land that was pretty far away from us. It was an interesting area for sure. I hadn't seen anything like it before. It was the most pure silence I've ever heard in my whole life. No cars, no background noise. But there weren't any other noises either which made it kind of eerie. We were out in nature, but we couldn't hear any signs of it like birds or crickets or any flying insects. It was dead quiet. It started to sprinkle the tiniest bit of rain, and even that sound seemed amplified. I remember my mom saying, This is weird, huh? It really was very weird, and I didn't think it could get much weirder, but it did. We looked out into the body of water and watched the small raindrops hitting the surface. The surface of the lake was super still, like freakily still, like I've never seen water so still, not even in a bathtub. So that's what made what we saw much more horrifying. As we looked out towards this body of water, we saw something rather large splash the water upwards. 
The sound alone was enough to frighten me. A loud splash after hearing nothing for several minutes was quite shocking, but the enormity of whatever forced the water up was unexplainable. I don't think it could have been a fish if it was that fish was humongous. I hadn't noticed prior, but I noticed at this point that there was this weird series of smaller objects sitting above the water off to my left. They almost looked like a row of rocks peeking out of the water. It must have not caught my eye before, being that the sides were pretty much covered by large rocks. But as soon as we saw that splash and the gigantic ripples it created in the lake, I started to wonder if those rocks weren't really rocks at all. But the back of something large hidden under the water, all this observation took no time at all, and if I'm being truthful, I was much too frightened to stand there much longer. My mom started to usher me into the car, saying that we needed to leave. So we got into the car and left. I would have thought that my mind was playing tricks on me. All of what we had experienced was truly, for a lack of better words, creepy, and my mom started revisiting the events out loud as we drove. Everything she was saying was exactly what I saw, too. I can still hear her words. It wasn't a fish. It couldn't have been right. All I know is, whatever it was made me so scared I wouldn't step foot near another lake or river again. I just won't. So I know this is gonna sound weird and ridiculous, but the craziest thing happened at Walmart today that kinda freaked me out for a while. So me and my girlfriend go to Walmart pretty frequently. It's cheap, and sometimes they have really cool Disney and Animam shirts and stuff that we like, and it's only five minutes from our house. So she told me she was going to check the women's clothes to see if they have any biker shorts, while I was going to go to the men's section to see if they had any new anime or Disney shirts. We decided I would just meet back with her since the registers are right in front of the women's clothes, and then we would go. When I was done checking the men's stuff, I see my girlfriend walking towards the food section, and in my head, I was wondering why she was going there. So I started following her to catch up to her, and I see her suddenly turn left. So I ran and turned left, and no one was there. It was an empty aisle, and I was kind of confused. So I ran some more looking for her, thinking she was missing with me, and maybe went to the next aisle, and legit, there wasn't anybody near there, and I was confused on where she would have gone. So I decided to just call her up. Uh, I said, hey, where are you, and why did you go to the food aisle? I told you I'd meet back up with you in the women's clothes, and she said I am in the women's clothes. I've been in the same spot. Immediately, I said I just saw you walk here, referring to the section I'm at, and she was really confused. I ran towards the women's section and found her and told her what happened and what I saw, and she said maybe I mistook someone else for her, but my girlfriend is a pretty distinct girl. She's five feet nine and has really long blonde hair and is decked out completely in Disney. She was definitely weirded out, but kind of just shrugged it off. But honestly, I have no clue what happened. I was only like seven feet from her when she turned the aisle, and I don't think she would have made it all the way down to the next aisle by the time I turned into it. And I ran around the entire vicinity looking for her because I thought it was weird. She was legit trying on clothes when I met back up with her at the women's section. Who the theft did I see, or what was it? The fact this happened at Walmart, of all places, is weird in itself, but it really did freak me out, and it I know people are gonna think, oh, you just saw someone who looked like your girlfriend. But she was wearing something very specific, a uh, Disneyland jersey, which you get only from the park with Disney Crocs. We live in a retirement town near a res in the valley, so not many five feet nine blonde girls decked out in Disney here. Plus the girl I saw disappeared basically into thin air. So even if it was a girl who looked like my girlfriend still was weird as fuck. I look up and he looks at me and says going to be a full moon tonight said something else about luck and I just kind of stood there looking at him. Husband comes out of the bathroom and we head off. We didn't think too much of it. A little while later we kept hearing the noises getting louder. 
We could also hear trees breaking and things like that. We tried to ignore it, but we soon found out that ignoring those sounds was a bad idea. We saw a creature that was seven to eight feet tall coming toward us. The creature stood like a human and acted as a human would, but it looked like a dog or a wolf. We were completely surprised. We had no idea what was going on. We ran back to our cars as fast as we could and drove away. Maybe five years ago, one night I was at a friend's house out in the country, in Vesper, Wisconsin, when my friend's car turned in and came rushing up the driveway. The car came to a halt and two of my other friends jumped out. They explained that they had seen something they just couldn't describe. I asked them if they got a good look at whatever had them so shook up. They looked at each other and said yes. They said they were driving through the country on their way to join us and were driving past a farm when they noticed something in the ditch. The friend who was driving said he flashed his brights to get a better look and whatever it was raised up and ran across the road on all fours. It looked like it could walk on two legs if it wanted to, they both said. They also said it looked like it was half dog, half man, or maybe half dog and half monkey. They couldn't explain how the creature looked any better than that. They just kept trying to compare it to other animals. They said they were about 20 yards from it. The brights were on and they got a good look at it. Well, that's the story. I'll never forget how stricken their faces were with panic and fear. I don't think they were lying. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you tomorrow, son.